Hi, my name is Nick Janarakis, and today I will talk about probabilistic verification of network control planes. This is joint work with Alexandra Silva and David Walker. The control plane of the network is a distributed system that computes the paths over which hosts connected to the network can exchange traffic. Network engineers issue a configuration for each switch in the network, describing which routing protocols should be used, setting the policy of the network, whether that is filtering some routes or setting path preferences. The problem is that it is challenging to coordinate a distributed system with these local configurations, especially since these configurations are often thousands of lines of code. So operators have turned to network verification tools to ensure their configurations match their intentions. Before deploying a new set of configuration files, operators can use a static verifier to check whether their intentions are satisfied. And they can ask questions such as, can two hosts talk to each other, or does traffic always traverse a firewall in the network, or is connectivity retained when some links in the network fail? On the other hand, operators do not expect properties to always be true. Sometimes a switch might crash, or some links connecting two different parts of the network may fail. So the network's operation is subject to this probabilistic phenomena, and in practice, operators want to check that their properties hold with some very high probability allowing for short violations of these properties. In this paper, our goal is to bridge the gap between the probabilistic specifications that operators use in practice and the deterministic answers that most existing verifiers uh, focus on. And there are multiple conflicting objectives to achieve that, uh, and we need to carefully balance them. First of all, there is a scalability issue when analyzing large networks. Usually the techniques which are fast either cannot reason about unknowns in the network, such as combinations of failures, or they only support a very limited subset of routing protocols, making them less useful in practice. Similarly, approaches which are more general, supporting multiple protocols, and also exhaustive reasoning about unknowns, do not scale well. We build on a functional language designed specifically to describe the routing behavior of networks. It's a very simple and conventional functional language. In fact, it's simpler than you might expect. It lacks some basic features such as recursions, recursion. But despite its simplicity, it allows us to construct very detailed routing models. And to model unknowns in the network, we adapt the approach of uh, solver-guided languages like Rosette and allow the user to declare some values as symbolic, meaning that they denote any possibly well-typed value. In fact, users may also specify a distribution describing the probability symbolic equals uh, a specific concrete value. Finally, to deal with the scalability issue that arises in complex networks, we separate symbolic reasoning, for instance, reasoning about whether a link has failed, from concrete computations, um, for instance, what is the route after applying the configured routing policy. In contrast, previous approaches would resort to performing all computations as symbolic computations. For example, SMT-based techniques will convert the problem to a logical formula and ask an SMT solver to find the solution. So let's look at a probabilistic network model in our language. Assuming we start with some device configurations, we can translate them into our language, describing the topology they define and the routing policy that uh, they enforce. So this is what routing protocols are used and how they transform a route as it traverses a link between two switches. And these are simple transformations, uh, such as increasing the path length or setting a tag on the route. The complexity comes from the very high number of rules that are used. In practice, the function describing the network's policy may be several thousand lines of code. Next, uh, we will define a failure model for the network. In this case, we declare four symbolic uh, Boolean values, which we will use to denote whether a node has failed, uh, which we assume happens with probability 0.005. The function fnode associates its node uh, with one of the symbolics we declared, except for node 4, which uh, we assume cannot fail. The function failures captures what it means for a node to fail. Given a link, if either node at its endpoints has failed, so if the respective symbolic is true, then an empty route is returned, otherwise the policy of the network is applied as usual. Now that we have the model, what we need to do is come up with a way to efficiently interpret it. Because of the symbolics, these programs describe a huge state space, so we'll have to carefully navigate that. Okay, so first let's focus on symbolic computations. When we declare a symbolic, uh, we get the set uh, that includes 
all possible values for that type. To efficiently represent these potentially very large sets, we will use binary decision diagrams. In this example, F0 denotes the set that includes both uh, false and true. As a BDD, we can represent the set inclusion function using a decision node F0, where uh, if F0 is false, this is the dust arrow, uh, that leads to the true uh, terminal node, meaning that uh, false belongs to the set. And the same applies to the solid arrow, which represents the true value of F0. One of the advantages of binary decision diagrams is that they do not explicitly represent redundant decisions. So nodes that lead to the same result are automatically removed. Hence, in practice, we only need to store the terminal node true, which uh, is uh, one of the things that uh, gives us a compact representation uh, of this potentially very large state space. If we want to compute the set of values that describes that either F0 or F1 are true, then we can just directly do so over uh, the binary decision diagrams. For the logical OR, if F0 is true, then uh, uh, this leads to the um, uh, true leaf because it belongs to the set. Uh, otherwise, if it is false, uh, then we will look at F1, and if that is true, then again, this leads to the true leaf. Uh, otherwise, uh, this combination does not belong to the set, so it leads to the false leaf. On the other hand, when evaluating the network's policy, we could again convert everything into BDDs and work with this representation, and some prior work does this, but the problem with that is that we end up with very large BDDs as routes uh, require multiple bits to represent them. And then we have to perform uh, operations such as addition over BDDs, which is very expensive. What we want to do instead is to use fast hardware level instructions in order to process the routes. So we saw that uh, the guard of the ADNLs is symbolic and that the branches are concrete. So what is the type uh, of the computation for the whole function? In this case, we don't want to interpret it as symbolic because then we'll be computing everything over BDDs, which is slow. And we can't really use a concrete computation because there is a symbolic computation in there. For these computations, we introduce the concept of a multivalue which are concrete computations that rely on some symbolic computation. So whereas the interpretation of a symbolic we used is a function from bit vectors to booleans, a multivalue is a function that can return any type of value, in this case, BGP routes. When applied to an edge, the function failures returns a, functions, a function that takes as input a multivalue and returns another multivalue. We represent this using a, a variant of BDDs called multi-terminal BDDs, uh, where the only thing that changes is that the terminal nodes can take any type of value, not just a Boolean. So the diagram can have more than two terminal nodes. Given such a diagram uh, as the input uh, to, function, to the function failures, uh, it will transform into a new multi-terminal BDD by performing a symbolic computation on the decision nodes of the, di of the diagram and a concrete computation on the terminal node. To distinguish between the different types of computations, we leverage the type system. Types are annotated with a computation mode, so in addition to the type of the value uh, computed, they also give us information about the computation mode that is used. And there are some basic rules about how you can combine the different computation modes. You can almost always combine a concrete computation with a, a symbolic computation by interpreting uh, the concrete uh, computation as BDDs. Uh, and similarly, you can combine a concrete and a multivalue just by applying the concrete computation on the leaves of the multivalue. And obviously, every mode is compatible with itself. But the key idea is that uh, multivalue computations and symbolic computations are incompatible. You can't use one where the other is expected. If this was allowed, then we will have to convert the multivalue to a BDD and then all operations will be over BDDs and we will lose any performance advantages. There's only one way to combine a symbolic and a multivalue, and that is to condition the multivalue using the symbolic as we do in the example above. Obviously, uh, this is constraining the type of programs you can write. Uh, there might be some programs that you want to write, but you cannot, uh, but that is the trade-off uh, for faster executions of the programs that do type check. 
We implement the different computation modes via, via a translation to um, a lower level language that exposes various BDD and multi-terminal BDD primitives, which we have implemented in OCaml on top of a conventional BDD library. The type system guides the translation, and we have proof on paper that when a translation is applied to a well-typed program, it produces a well-typed program in the lower level language. To recap, given a model in problem B, uh, we can simulate the routing process, computing for each node the routes it has learned under different failure scenarios. And once the simulation has completed, we can check network properties by computing Boolean expressions over these routes. For instance, checking whether a, not, a node has a route to the destination, uh, we just need to assert that the optional value is constructed using uh, the sum constructor. Finally, uh, we can combine the computed assertions uh, with the distributions of the symbolics, uh, which we also represent as decision diagrams. And using a weighted model counting algorithm, we can compute the exact probability that the assertion is true. This design was key to scaling the verification process. Because simulation is already computationally very expensive, if we were to mix reasoning about probabilities in the simulation process, then we conjecture will only be able to verify very small networks. And uh, note that we're not interested in the intermediate states of the simulation. So computing probabilities during the intermediate states would be uh, another uh, uh, slowdown of the whole process. We evaluated our tool on ISP and data center networks. These two have slightly different properties. ISP networks tend to have less symmetries and less redundancy, but richer policy while data center networks are generally larger but have very symmetric design. Uh, the table shows one ISP and one data center network evaluated against two different failure models. One where all the nodes can fail and one where all links can fail. In both cases, the, the route computation is what dominates the verification line. Computing probabilities and checking assertions is very fast. You might also notice that for each network and failure model there are two experiments. The difference is in the ordering of decision nodes we choose. It's uh, well known that picking a bad order can blow up the size of a decision diagram, but there's also no efficient way, way to find an optimal ordering. Uh, usually, a good ordering is motivated by the application. So in this case, we tried a random variable ordering and an ordering that's based on a breadth-first search from the destination node. Uh, intuitively, a failed node or link that is close to the destination will have larger impact than a, a failure far from the destination. The BFS ordering, uh, as you can see, worked much better than the random one, uh, and this is reflected in both the computation time and also in the size of the decision diagrams generated throughout simulation, where there is at least uh, an order of magnitude difference. In the paper, you will find more details about how our type system and the implementation of the various computation modes work. You will also find more details about how our weighted model counting algorithm works, and in particular for symbolics that require multiple decision nodes like symbolic integers. Finally, we also discuss a new simulation algorithm that we devised in order to optimize the number of steps required for simulation to converge. Currently, one of the drawbacks of our approach is that we don't support observed statements, which are fairly standard in probabilistic languages and allow you to condition one distribution over another. It's not obvious how to do this with uh, our approach, uh, and an interesting question is to find the conditions under which we can do it efficiently. Thank you for your time.